Hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, I'm so excited that we are able to talk today about the art servancy residency that we did with the Gallery 224 in Port Washington, Wisconsin. Today, we have residents gathered from all four years of the residency. So it's a relatively young residency. And our panelist, Todd Mrzinski, was in the first year. Then Mary Mendela was the second year. Uh, myself, Heidi Parks, as well as Mariah Duncan Craker and Lodge. Oh my goodness, I don't say I don't say your names, <laughs> last names that often. <laughs> Mariah and Lodge were also in the third year. And now Sarah Icorn is going to be in the fourth year, which is just beginning. So it's really exciting to be able to talk from the perspective of the arc of the residency, as well as to be able to share about our own experiences with it. We are going to each share for about five minutes uh, with some photos of the residency. And then we are really excited to dig into some uh, conversations. We will be taking questions from the audience as well as I've prepared some questions and I'm eager if you guys have questions as well, uh, just to have a conversation about the residency. I will kick things off with our PowerPoint. Okay, so this is me, and this is a photo of me at Lake Park. Lake Park is the site of my artist residency. I live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, in the River West neighborhood, which is walking distance from Lake Park. If you go straight east from my home, you arrive at the lake. I um, used the quilt that you see on the left as part of my application for the artist residency. That's a quilt that I made during the first 100-ish days of the pandemic. I began it on the 7th of April. Every day I added to it, it has a real diaristic quality. And there are a lot of markers from nature that I was noticing popping up in my work. For example, you can see I used a quilting technique called a yo-yo to make purple chives. And my friend Sarah Eichhorn is the one who taught me to make purple vinegar from chive flowers in the spring. Mm. Uh, so that's a little in thing that, that I was doing that made me start to think about the artist residency. I was lucky that it, I think, popped up on my Facebook and I couldn't even figure out where it was from, if it was an ad or if it was from someone else. But I was able to learn about the residency and apply. And that interest in nature and during the pandemic, wanting to try to get outside and see people in less stressful situations than the grocery store made me very interested in applying. These are two of the large quilts that I made during and for the artist residency. The one on the left, you can see a common thread with having leaves appliqued on the quilt. I began it in October, which is the start of the residency. And that was our first blue moon. So the second two full moons in one month on Halloween since I think 1945 or 46. So it felt like an interesting thing to mark. There were also some significant changes with the Supreme Court. And I noted that with this courthouse steps block. And I was teaching a lot on Zoom. And so a lot of these bits of applique were convenient demonstrations to show my students on how to do large scale or small scale applique. Uh, and, and other things like that. So I began in this bottom corner to work with scraps of white fabric that I often accumulate from backing my quilts. And that led me very naturally into this other quilt where I was working only with the scraps. You can see them much better in this quilt. They are pretty invisible in the bottom left of the other quilt. 
they're both about five feet by five feet and both very improvisationally made. I also made a series of small quilts that are about 16 inches square um, about my walks. So this is walk number one. Here you can see me with my Fitbit mapping my walk. And that was also part of my application to the residency that I was interested in mapping and cataloging the walking that I was doing and my interest in trying to be healthy and get outside and do more stuff. So here is one walk that I mapped. And then here you can see the other two walks. So this is walk number two and walk number three. And they are each uh, depicting different energies in the walk. The first walk was me and my partner, Bo, going for kind of a romantic evening stroll. The second walk is my ideal walk. So it didn't map an, a real walk with a real person, but it goes very accurately with that Google map view through all of my favorite places, my, my favorite trip to take people on. And then this third walk is an imagined walk. So I did not use a light table and map things accurately. I tried to depict the walk from memory. And then I was able to think about other things connected to memory. For example, there is a, a plaque that says this is an Indian mound. It's the only one left. We destroyed a lot of them. Um, there used to be animals and geometric shapes, and the plaque is from 1910, and it's uh, right where Locust Street comes across and meets with the park. It's my favorite place to begin walking because I have to drive the least to get there. And I always notice that plaque, and it kind of sets me off walking and wondering what was this land like before. It's also an Olmsted Park who designed uh, Central Park in New York. So there's a lot of thoughtfulness that went into the park design, but also remembering that there was something there before as well. And here you're getting a view of my current exhibition at Gallery 224. And that um, is why I was excited to gather people because I'm having this exhibition right now. Here you can see the view through the window. I was in uh, embroidery magazine talking about my quilts. This is a quilt that I began before the residency, but I was able to finish it during the residency and it's made with lots of natural plant dyes, mostly dyed from Edie Yuri, who lives in Colorado. We were supposed to teach together in France, which is why I pieced the quilt and then that got canceled. This is my last image. I've been making some vases and they are also me trying to deal with my scraps and waste that's accumulated in the studio. I end up with lots of skinny strips of quilt batting and tiny bits of fabric and, and, and certainly from my kitchen, a recycling bin of glass bottles. And those things have combined to create some sculptures, which is a real surprise to me. When I applied to the residency, I certainly didn't think that I would be working three-dimensionally like that. And it's, it's been a wonderful thing to make something that is small and connected to nature and being a vase that could hold a flower and uh, making use of things that would otherwise be wasted. So, uh-oh, okay, good. <laughs> um, and then over to Lodge. Thank you, Heidi. That was absolutely wonderful. Um, I so I got into Donjas Bay. Um, I got into the residency because Nirmal Raja, another artist, uh, knew about one of the documentaries um, that I was working on for a while. Um, it's called Searching for Sparrows, where I talk about the loss of bird habitats due to rapid urbanization. This is in India where I grew up. And I, um, I was lamenting like the loss of bird sounds because I grew up, I woke up to the sounds of birds while I was um, growing up there. And then now it's filled with traffic. And so Nirmal knew about that work and she said, you will love um, this, uh, this residency, which is coming up, do apply. And I'm so excited I applied. 
And the reason why I chose Donjus Bay was because I found out that Donjus Bay um, Gorge was actually, uh, people used to live there and then it was given back to nature. So it's part of a conservancy now. And it was designed earlier by Jim Jensen. Uh, I wonder if he's a peer of um, Olmsted who designed Lake Park. But um, so this, this land was uh, going back to being preserved. And at some point, uh, eagles had started coming back. So for me, there was a parallel to like the birds, return of birds and the eagles. And they have not nested very recently, but they had come and they had nest, they had created a nest. And um, so that was my ex reason for um, applying as a resident of uh, for Donjus Bay Gorge. And it has been an absolutely wonderful experience. I um, go there, I wander, I watch, I listen. And I think it was a lot of retraining ourselves to be observant, to listen to the wind, to listen to the leaves, to listen to um, the sounds of nature. And also uh, in one of this uh, slides, I have uh, the spring ephemerals which come up, like the first things, the moth comes up first and just learning how nature starts return, like coming back after, uh, once it starts thawing after the winter. So the whole cycle and understanding it and being present and just listening again to nature was the biggest gift. So these are the spring ephemerals. This was the biggest gift that I got from the residency um, to be present in nature. And I opted to make a, a few short films and one of that is going to be in collaboration with Heidi. And um, we started the work with uh, great excitement and I had to take a two month break. So we will be reconvening uh, to work on that. Um, this One of the things that we'll be exploring is who has access to nature. And uh, so that's the work that Heidi and I will be, a, a short video that uh, we'll be working on and the work has already started and I'm excited to renew that back. Um, so uh, we'll be making a, a few short films at the Gorge. And these thick, the slides that uh, we just showed are like just a little tiny glimpse of what I was able to capture. Um, these are still stills, but I have videos that are not ready to be screened yet. But it's, I'm very excited that, uh, that I was able to participate and just the meeting other artists because I'm a filmmaker, I don't um, get to meet uh, other artists who work with different mediums and how they interpret what they see, what is perceived and how they mold it. And so this has really impacted and expanded my visual uh, palette. And so I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see how I, to see how it has penetrated into my work and what, what will come out of it. So it's, it's a wait and um, it will hap uh, hopefully will happen soon. Oh, I agree. Being one of 12 artists in the residency was a huge draw to me. I was so excited to get to see and meet some other makers. Um, over to Mariah. Thank you for this opportunity, by the way, Heidi. Thank you. Yeah, Heidi, I think one of my favorite memories um, was walking with you in Lake Park early on. Um, so thank you. Um, my name is Mariah Donegan Crocker, she, her. Um, today I join you from uh, the ancestral lands of the Menominee and Ho-Chunk people, Appleton, Wisconsin, where I teach movement and dance practice um, at Lawrence University. Um, my interest is in place, uh, both the interior and the exterior, and I research this through the body. Um, the body is resilient. Uh, the body asks intelligent questions, and that's sort of the premise, or um, the premise I enter into all of my teaching, facilitating, and art making situations, whether that's um, intergenerational um, centers, or working with babies, or working in higher ed, or touring my dance work stateside and abroad. Um, that's the place I work from. Um, something on my mind, I think, that has guided my work in the past couple uh, years is the idea of episodic attention. Uh, John Stilgo speaks about this in his writing about walking the urban city, as does um, 
other dance makers and I, I kind of view this as a zooming into the moment at hand and then widening the peripheral vision to see what's happening in a, on a larger scale. So it's kind of um, fractal patterns for living. Um, and uh, this image is certainly, let's go back one. Um, this image is certainly uh, an example of, of that. This was prior to art servancy. Um, I stepped out of my house in central Illinois and allowed the wind to push me three miles west. Um, at that point, I uh, was alerted by the crows that something was going on to my left and followed them until I was on the periphery of their sort of circular pattern. Um, a storm was coming in. I took my GoPro, I attached it, I taped it to a, a, a stalk of corn and, and shot a, a short dance film. And this is um, where that image came from. And, and then I quickly power walked back home before the first summer storm came about um, next. Thank you. Um, prior to COVID, my collaborator and I were touring an evening length dance work called Armageddon or Sunrise or something um, around the country. Um, it's a work about the, the, ge the geography of grief and exhaustion. And um, when our touring suddenly stopped, we were left with the question of um, what happens when the choreography or the performance, the dance performance is not the pinnacle of your research. Um, how do we use these research tools um, in, in, um, in other ways? How do we use these choreographic tools in other ways? And that certainly was the lens from which I entered into art servancy. Um, so we can go to the next slide. Um, throughout my year at uh, at the uh, Milwaukee River Greenway, um, Potawatomi, Ojibwe, Ho-Chunk, and Menominee lands. Um, I led monthly walks for anybody, any age who wanted to show up and participate in place. Um, we would meet in Kern Park on Saturday mornings and, um, and then head down to the river to experience place together uh, and safely. Um, so images here, there were text message walks that happened where we would exchange phone numbers and every five to eight minutes I would send out a prompt of how to experience place. Um, I'm certainly still working with these walks right now, uh, these text message walks. I'm um, creating an international text message walks for the students at my university that can't join us in person this year. Um, and then there's an image of a, a small field guide for walking, which was handed out one sunny morning, and we all uh, took the field guide and went our own way, um, rerouting, routing ourselves through place. Um, when I speak of these walks, I, I purposely use the phrase participating in place, which for me is much different than observing. Um, participation specifies our relationship with um, the living earth. Um, it asks us to understand the way our foot meets the ground and uh, who passed on the land before us, what sort of reparations we're making to the land currently and um, how we want to leave the land, the living earth for the next generation. If you would like a handheld um, field guide for walking, I will put my email in chat and um, send me a message and I'll send you some snail mail. That's all, thank you. Oh, thank you. We will put that in the YouTube video in the comments as well for people to be able to reach out. Well, thank you, Heidi, for organizing all of this and everyone being here and part of it. Um, my name is Sarah Eichhorn, she, her pronouns. Um, I'm a fiber artist, educator, sustainable living advocate, and mother. And um, I'm here in Milwaukee, like, down the street from Heidi. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, for this, I decided to put this picture of myself and my two kiddos in the slideshow because I rarely show pictures of them, uh, you know, on social media or anything like that, but they were actually part of my application for the residency. And, you know, we take a lot of walks as a family and the walks are within the River West neighborhood. 
And now one of my kiddos goes to school along the Beer Line Trail. And that is actually where I'm doing my residency is along the, Mil the Beer Line Trail in Milwaukee. And so, um, and I'll kind of explain more of this through the slides. Um, if you wanna go to the next one, Heidi. So um, as far as, here's two quilts that I made this year. Um, as far they align with my practice, my lifestyle, my goals of being, you know, a sustainable living advocate. I am trained in fashion design and costume design and as well as surface design. So a lot of my work incorporates natural dyes and um, so both of these quilts were made utilizing various um, sources, resources for natural color. Um, and I like to keep pushing myself and this is where like my kids help me with that as we grow some of our own plant materials in our backyard and use resources throughout the neighborhood um, to obtain natural color and do various bundles for color um, along, along the year, without, throughout the year. Um, the one quilt, the preservation of summer 2021 are all colors that I obtained during the summer months, um, some with my kiddos, some without. And then the vignettes quilt um, is one of Heidi's quilt patterns that I recently completed and was super excited to have finished. And it incorporated a bunch of prompts um, throughout the span of a month, 30 days-ish. And many of my blocks that I created utilized um, my kids that you know and and how I reflect in being a mother um, as and an artist um, and wearing all of those hats you next mm -hmm. and so these are a couple more pieces that reflect on my role in motherhood and as an artist um, and educator really um, the one is pump and dump and that's utilizing the yo-yo technique that uh, Heidi had mentioned earlier and also a flag collaboration that I did with my oldest kiddo and using scraps. So I also am a scrap saver, especially when it comes to my naturally dyed fabric. And so um, he helped me create a piece together and layering and picking out fabrics to create this flag that he can use and brings me a lot of joy to see as well. And thinking of more ways that we can work together and especially during this art residency within the next year. Um, and the last piece I showed um, is a recent piece as well. Um, I have a vintage quilt top and applicates some lettering on top. And social justice is an issue, you know, it's always in the forefront of my mind, especially as an educator and trying to be better and learning and doing the work and the research on my own. And one of the first projects I'm hoping to work on within this art servancy this month is an, a land acknowledgement banner, right? And how can we make that more, uh, you know, always at the forefront of what land are we on? What is the history of the land that we're on? And how can we preserve the land we're on or do better with the land we're on? And me having the Beer Line Trail as my, my home base for inspiration for the residency and it being set in such an urban setting to um, and what kind of maintenance gets done on that on our beer line trail and who is walking the trail and do they know the history of the trail and how can we get more people involved um, within the neighborhood within the city is something I'm very much looking forward to and how can I can um, keep utilizing the mediums of my choice to to obtain that community. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, we're gonna say hi to Mary and then I'll click play. Oh, unmute. All right, there we go. Okay, I'm Mary Mendla and I did my residency in the years 20, 2019 to 2020. And my site was the Fairy Chasm Nature Preserve. And it was a difficult year for, for um, art servancy. It was the year where, of the pandemic, um, the, uh, the shutdown. Um, and at the time of my uh, final exhibit, the, the gallery was closed. Gallery 224 had, had been closed completely for, 
since about March of that year. And so I decided to do a virtual video of my exhibit and, and it includes some of my artworks as well as photographs uh, that, I, that I took that the artwork relates to. And my, um, my mediums for, for these works uh, were oil and cold wax paintings, abstract. And then also I was doing a lot of photography and digital art. And so I was layering my abstract painting over some of, of these digital prints also. And so this is, the, it's a conglomeration of, of all of those different styles. So Heidi, you can, you can click it. Okay, here we go, one second. <laughs> I realized I forgot to optimize for sharing sound and then it, um, okay. Oh, wait. hang on, let me make sure one more time. I have it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it remembered. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go.
Okay, Heidi, you can go ahead. Thank you. That was so beautiful. Thank you. Well, one of the main focuses for me with my residency really started when I was a very, very young child, maybe about five years old. I used to play down in, in this gorge. And, um, and so I had this feeling of this magical and mysterious place. And it was a place that, that just engendered in me a love for nature and forests you know, ever since. And so I wanted my artwork to show some of that mystery um, or somewhat of a magical quality, which is why I combined the realistic imagery with some of the abstract painting over it. Uh, this, is, this is a piece that I've done since. In fact, I just finished it a couple days ago um, over one of the uh, photographs that I took. Uh, it was actually part of the exhibit called First Snow. First Snow. Um, and I, <clears throat> so I embellished it with, with some painting over the image in a way that, that shows some of the, the realism of the dried plants and the, and the ice, but, but they're uh, somewhat hidden and, and veiled, a uh, uh, little bit of the reality is veiled, mm -hmm. which is, relates to my idea of, or rem my memories of, of my childhood experiences. Okay, next slide. And then uh, these, the image on the left, is also uh, something that I've done since the residency. Uh, it's using uh, a collaged uh, element from a photograph, which is the, the one on the, the top right, that was taken in the, um, in the, uh, during the residency. And then the uh, image on the bottom right was one of the pieces that I, that I had for my exhibit. Next slide. Mm -hmm. This is a, uh, another image. This is not, is not from the residency, but it's, I included it to show how the, how the experience of, of that year and being immersed in that nature and then creating a, a body of work, it really has influenced my work since then. And so this is a photograph that I have mounted and, and painted over with some mixed media applications. And next one, mm -hmm. and this is uh, also a very recent uh, painting that I've titled Memories Revisited. And this is an oil and cold wax painting. It's, it's a little larger, the ones I've been showing you so far are pretty small. And um, it's, to me, it's a feeling of entering down into the chasm and, but it's handled, with the, the imagery is handled with, with a, quite a bit of veiling and, creating you know, a lot of question about, about just what, what those images are meant to be. Um, and I, I see it as, as revisiting memories from, from long ago. And I think this might be the last one. Yep. Okay, wonderful. Over to Todd. Hello, and thank you for having me. This has been wonderful so far. Um, I uh, am an artist in Milwaukee. I also teach at Myad, uh, continuing education, etching, painting, and drawing. And uh, the residency location that I had uh, was Falens Woods in West Bend. And uh, this is um, an example of an area. At Falens Woods, there's a pathway and you walk through and I would take my camera and as I was walking, just kind of snap photos of different elements of the woods that were really appealing to me and kind of walk through it almost like I was looking uh, for a treasure. And every time I went, I would find different things that would really be inspiring and kind of collect these images. And occasionally I would take a little sketchbook and draw Kind of gather these these images and moments and then bring them back 
and uh, focus on doing these etchings and, and really kind of communing with the photo and with the place, remembering back to that uh, location and moment and trying to put that into, a, into an etching. Uh, next, please. Uh, this is another uh, area in Flens Woods that I really just kind of came around a corner and saw this amazing tree and was like, oh, this is the next etching, this is the next one. So uh, I got a lot of image uh, photos of this and again, came back home and right away just sat down. And, and etching for me at this point was very new. I, I only had done it for a couple of weeks. Uh, I saw a show of Goya's etchings, was totally drawn to them and it, it happened to line up with this residency. So it was kind of like going into the residency uh, with a whole new medium in a whole new place. So it was really a, a time of discovery. Uh, next, please. Mm -hmm. uh, this is also uh, Flens Woods. Now, another aspect of working uh, with location over years that you get to see the changes of, of the season. So I was really fascinated by, not only by the medium of etching and then this, is also included, including aquatint. Uh, so my understanding of, of printmaking and of intaglio was developing as I was learning more about uh, Falens Woods and going deeper. This is actually, there's a river that runs through it. I really wasn't able to get to the river that much because it's very mossy and it was a very wet year that year. So this is a winter scene, and this is kind of like the deepest that I was able to get into this, um, into the area and get these photos and then come back again and experiment with the medium of printmaking and also the beauty of, of the trees and of the landscape of Flens Woods. Okay, next please. Okay, and this is a, a project that I did after the residency, actually uh, just about a year and a half ago. Um, at a home uh, in Milwaukee that uh, they were looking for uh, a mural. And I had been doing a series of charcoal drawings, uh, assembled drawings where I'd go out in my yard and look at trees in my yard and uh, on 18 by 24 sheets of paper, do drawings of the sections of the trees and then combine them into a larger drawings of or portraits of these trees. And I thought it would be really interesting to see what a, a full room drawing would look like. And like the next week, Portrait Society Gallery, uh, who I work with, uh, contacted me and said, we have somebody interested in your work and they have this whole room uh, that they'd like a mural in. So I went and looked at it and said, how about a drawn mural? So uh, I took about uh, three weeks to do and probably about 25 sticks of charcoal. But uh, it was done and it was really inspired by the trees that were directly outside of, the, of this room in the house. Uh, next, please. Uh, and this is some very current work. Right now, I'm really interested in uh, stumps, in kind of the, the remnant of this thing that I have been studying for years. Uh, how the energy still is there, um, but also how it has changed and the focus of, at first I was really focused on painting the log, painting the stump, but then I realized, wow, look at the, the amount of life around it and growing on it. And it just really kind of drew, uh, drew my attention almost as much as the, the log itself. So that's kind of where I am right now. Uh, this isn't an etching. This is a painting in oil on board, kind of to, made to look like an etching. So I'm kind of bridging the gap. Maybe it's going to become more painting. I might continue to focus on printmaking. My work really develops spontaneously and I go with the flow of inspiration. So I'm not quite sure what's gonna happen next, but 
I'm excited to see, uh, I mean, just working with Philens Woods and how that has transformed and transferred into my current work. Uh, I think it's really um, inspiring for me. And thank you, Heidi, for including me in this. Oh, thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. Um, let me just end. Okay. Um, that was so beautiful. It's so inspiring to get to see all of that work. Um, we, those of you in the chat, it would be awesome if you were able to write down, type into the chat um, where you're joining us from. And also if there is a place in nature that you like to visit frequently, whether it's near your home or, um, you know, Todd, you must have been driving at least 20 minutes to get to your location. So <laughs> whatever it is that you really love to, to visit, if you could share that in the chat, that would be so beautiful to get to land and, and see where you are. And Mariah, thank you for adding your email for the guide for walking. Okay. And then I have several questions that I'm eager to ask of everyone. And we don't necessarily have to have all six of us answer every question, but if we have at least a couple of people who feel moved, who feel like you've got an answer for, for that particular question. Um, I know that I personally have been really curious and interested in habits as a, a subject of study. And I'm very curious to know what are some of your habits that you have when you go to the location of your residency or especially for Todd and Mary post residency do you find that you cultivated habits during the residency that now anytime you go in nature or slow down that you that you have so a habit around your time on your land or in nature i know for me some of the most memorable trips were trips with other people. So I was very lucky that Laj and Mariah joined me at Lake Park multiple times. I also took my, my sweetheart to the lake many times and even brought friends on phone calls. <laughs> so they would call me and I would know I was in for an hour phone call and I would drive over to Lake Park and go for a walk while I was catching up with them. And those, those are some of my favorite memorable times there with um, some sociability. But um, yeah, I, I leave it to you guys. What are some of your habits? Well, I, I really enjoy walking completely alone. I like the solitude. And so um, I guess I guess I'm, I'm not very social. <laughs> and um, I, I like to walk you know, slowly and, and very, very, with very much awareness and in the moment. And I take a lot of photos. It's just with my cell phone. I don't, I don't have any big heavy duty equipment that I take with me, but I, I love to see little vignettes to, you know, take a photograph of. And, and sometimes I post them on my social media with just simply a, a comment of, you know, a moment of noticing that, 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 and, mm. and, um, I, I find that, that even just a short walk, or even if I'm, you know, walking in, I live in Grafton, it's not really urban, but we'll call it Gra urban Grafton. <laughs> and if I'm on the sidewalks walking, you know, to the coffee house or something like that, you know, I'm, I'm still always looking and, and thinking of, of, of the shapes and the beauty that I'm seeing. It's interesting you should mention the walks, Heidi, um, in that I was talking about this with a colleague earlier today who lives in, near the neighborhood and lived near the Bear Lane Trail for a long time. And she was so thrilled that I was doing this with the Bear Lane Trail. And she's like, can we walk together? <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, yes. And I, I rarely get to walk by myself now. It is usually we're all going family in tow. Um, but I, I'm really looking forward to, is, you know, having that that adult time or that fellow creative time with someone who can share their intimacy and uh, with the space. 
as well and how that might change my perspective of intentions with my work and, and things like that. I want to um, share, uh, we, one of the things that I did, which was very exciting was there was an eclipse one day and then we had uh, a live, like we uh, tried to like post on Instagram and say like, join us. Uh, not many people joined, but my son woke up very early in the morning to join me at the gorge. And we went and had a live uh, documentation of the eclipse happening. So that was very exciting. But to the point of solitary walking that Mary brought up, I was, I was surprised to discover that I'm not a solitary walker, mm -hmm. but I also learning to how, how to be one and finding pleasure in that. So that transformation is, I should say is still happening because I'm usually like with people and go with people, take a friend, show them the gorge and like find this, I found a great pleasure in like, uh, introducing the gorge to people who actually have lived, grown up in Milwaukee. So I was like, here it is. And they're like, oh my gosh, we never knew this mm -hmm. existed. And that was very exciting. But I'm exploring this idea of going alone. And it, it's, a, it's, it's just, I was surprised to realize that it's just not so natural. Like I, I thought it should be or would be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. I found I would like bring a podcast with me and, and and be listening and watching or something of that variety. And I, I, I so loved my trips with Mariah to your space and the special morning walks that you led with um, a prompt. And so the first time that you and I went alone, you posed some questions around looking for a moment of support in nature and the way we saw like a tree leaning against another tree or making a home, you know, a plant making a home in a tree. And, and that really has helped, helped me consider more taking quiet walks by myself and, and you know, in, enjoying that, that slowing down and that looking. So um, Mariah's work, I think is a really good way for, for people like me and Lodge who are very, sociable in nature to slow down and notice a little more. And then take that noticing back to urban settings. Like what does it mean to look for plate, you know, ways things and folks are supporting each other, power lines interacting and you know. So so I think um, these are practice spaces for how we can actually re-enter into the dailiness, the daily spaces that we find ourselves in as we walk around the block. So um, yeah, they're not spaces that are isolated in experience or intention. Oh, yeah, that's so beautiful. Thank you. Um, I have another question and let's see, I, as, as an artist, I love to engage in storytelling and the aspect of art making that is connected to storytelling. And I wonder, is there a story that you find yourself telling about the residency, the land, or the art that you've made? Um, and and it, you know, it could be any of us, but those, those bits of stories that you tell this, this one time I was outside and... <laughs> Um, what can you share with us in that line of storytelling? Um, <clears throat> I, uh, I did a little, made a little video um, of the Lens Woods kind of, that's one thing that I realized I'm a, quite a documentary walker, maybe since the Lens Woods, because I bet you 80% of my film role is like, on my phone is like, pictures of trees on the walk. And, uh, but uh, I, I realized that um, it's, uh, it was really interesting to, to go in and, and to film uh, there and, and have that experience. Um, yeah, and, and just, I, my daughter uh, at that time was really going through uh, changes, uh, going from childhood to uh, adolescence and uh, that was I guess in in that season through the film um, kind of a story went on in that sense because I would go there and walk with her a lot so to see that transform transformation in her 
and also uh, through the seasons was was something that that occurred in my work. Um, another question that I have is um, around it, it's easy, I think, in our presentations, when you're told share in five minutes, you lean towards sharing the biggest stories, the biggest moments. What are maybe some of the subtlest echoes of the residency, um, ways that the residency has influenced your art making or your living in in like really gentle ways, like maybe it changed what you ate, or maybe, um, yeah, you know, like like just things that seem subtle or gentle or unexpected as an a result of the residency. I think that kind of brings me to a walk that I took with Leona, who is the land conservancy manager there, and. She was pointing out how the moss moss comes out first, and then the spring ephemerals, and then, and then I so I started noticing like the really really tiniest little things which start coming, and even at the end when things are right now when after the fall between fall and winter, when things are like re, the decay has started happening, I don't I don't look at it as complete decay, but there is this the it the slow death is not the right word but the slow like calming of nature and going back to earth and and noticing like the beauty in those things which are drying and becoming brown and and yet like in very very small places there is this like a flower is blooming and it's so minuscule that you would miss it if you're not paying attention and going slow or pausing so that was those those are like my exciting discoveries and i think i'm slowly bringing it back to, to the other work that I do. Well, um, I've, I, as I mentioned in the time when I was presenting, I, I've really incorporated uh, some of the techniques that I developed through the artwork that I produced for my exhibit. And, um, and I've, develop them further and I'm bringing them on into, into my upcoming work in, in ways that I really wasn't expecting then. then. I, I'm starting to incorporate actual collage in my work um, of, of these images, rather than just a, in the exhibit, I was working painting over a print of the work, but um, now I'm working on, on multi-layered pieces and, and bringing in Probably I haven't started this yet, but actually bringing in mixed media items uh, from nature, you know, finding sticks and stones and dried leaves and things. And I'm really um, interested to see where it all goes because it really has been um, a blossoming of, of these ideas. And they really do go back to the residency, which the residency then took me back into my childhood. So it's a, it's a whole multi-layered revisiting of, of memories. And, um, and the, the immersion in nature was, was just so completely nurturing uh, to start off this process. Thank you. Um, I wonder, people who are watching might think, wow, that sounds really fun to be part of that residency. Is there one near me that I could apply to? Or is this something that I could start locally? And so a, a few prompts that could be interesting to discuss. Number one, um, do any of us here know a little bit more of the history of how the Art Servancy began, what it took to get it started? Um, is it something that could be recreated in another city joining conservationists and artists? Number two, um, I didn't get special access to any, you know, I mean, I did get special access to the other artists, which I think is so valuable, but the actual land is open to everyone. I had no special pass to go to Lake Park. I was able to, 
purposefully set an intention and go and visit that space all on my own. And so I wonder, you know, if someone wanted to just on their own independently make a commitment to being in nature for a year in a specific location, what are some tips that we might have for them to make that a richer experience to be a little closer to the residency if they either don't live in Milwaukee or aren't able um, you know, to, to be in a residency in an official capacity? How might they do it themselves? But also, um, what's some of our history behind the Art Servancy residency itself? Um, I don't know the history and I would love to know the history, but I would like to say in that way in that I was just in India for two and a half months as a, as a caregiver and I went and visited the parks, the little few parks that are left over now because there's a rapid urbanization which is happening in my town. And one of the things that I got involved was saving uh, banyan trees. I don't know if anybody's aware of what banyan trees are. It's really these are this amazing huge trees which have like trunks coming down uh, and creating their own roots. It's worth looking them looking them up. And so this group, this is just a group of nature lovers. They are they exist on WhatsApp. They're not activists or anything, but they all got involved to save 900 banyan trees from being cut in Hyderabad because they are being cut to extend uh, the road and create a four lane highway. And this has happened in many cities, it's happening all over. But to be part of this energetic group who are like going and just organically creating ways to save the trees and bring them in the memory of the citizens. Um, and it's still ongoing. I will um, share a link to sign a petition um, that I hope everybody can sign to save the trees. So just being part like, and they, they say, they share a lot of information about trees in the WhatsApp group, but. That was a very, uh, I, I felt like Hyderabad is ripe for uh, something like art, art servancy because there's so many nature lovers and they are all lamenting this loss of nature around them. So that's all I can say. I don't, I, I don't have ideas, but I do carry my experience with, to whoever is willing to listen in the group, so. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Todd, I think you had something on the tip of your tongue as well. Yeah, I would say uh, just explore. I mean, there's so many different um, areas that are pres uh, preserved for exploration, for um, for us to to walk through and enjoy, and and to just go in and connect with that uh, basic presence. It's so much easier to connect with of the present moment in nature, it seems, than in front of a screen or uh, with all of the dis distractions possibly in the city. So to just go and uh, enjoy these areas. And I mean, I think of going back to Flynn's Woods kind of like an old friend and visiting uh, areas that uh, hold special magic for me. So um, yeah, just to, to be able to explore. And I've discovered, I, I was at uh, Donjas Bay Gorge just because of this residency. I've, mm -hmm. you know, have gone to other places because of the residency. So to kind of use it almost like a, uh, a map or a, a key to these uh, wonderful worlds. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, that reminds me that one of my really treasured memories of the residency was before I was accepted, when I was deciding if I wanted to apply, I, I don't, I, I think of myself as an indoor person. <laughs> and, and I'm like afraid of bugs and sweat and sunscreen. And I didn't know exactly how much time in nature was required of me. And if I would be able to fulfill whatever obligations were part of the residency. So I, I spent several occasions going to Lake Park to try to figure out, could I physically commit to being in nature that much? And you know, did I want to also devote that kind of energy to my art making? Because there are a lot of things I like making quilts about. Um, 
And, and then I, so I, I went a few times and then decided, yes, I do want to apply. And then I remember walking around and thinking, oh, like, oh, this could be mine. I could be the artist in residency here if I get accepted. And, um, you know, that, that feeling of longing is something that comes up in my, my art making a lot, where I make work about things that I want or I wish for or I'm dreaming about or hoping for or um, I'm trying to manifest. That's a prompt in a different quilt pattern that I've written as well as around manifesting things. And for me, that moment was really special and helped me um, that that one of those first quilts that I showed with the leaves across it um, was very inspired by that period of wanting the residency and considering would I or could I do it. And, um, you know, certainly I did not have to be accepted to the residency to, to have that part. Um, so that that maybe also is an interesting or fun way way into making art or spending time in nature, and 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 there <laughs> I see one of my bigger stories is this summer I did get slowed down with my frequency of going to the park. Uh, it was wonderful that it began in October because those are my my favorite times of year to be outside. And then. May, late May came along and I made my way to the park and got five minutes in and there was this huge cloud of gnats just swarming and I, I turned around and I went home. I thought, I can't, <laughs> I can't put up with this. Um, but I think I did go for a walk in my, my neighborhood rather than just parking the car and going back into my house. I had carved that time out to walk and so I was able to walk around the neighborhood where there weren't big swarms of gnats from Lake Michigan. And you know, the, those, those baby steps towards getting outside more, I think were really good for me. Well, Heidi, um, th just thinking of longing, um, when I was following you, when you started this, it piqued my interest and you know, you reached out even saying like, I could definitely see you doing this and applying for it in the future. And then I was like, well, there's no better time than the present, right? <laughs> like I'm always gonna be busy. So let's just add one more thing to the plate. But um, just watching you develop, you know, going outside and taking your walks, cause yes, I know <laughs> you're an indoor snow person. It's like, you know, bundle up inside person. Um, it was, it, it helped me daydream and create that longing, you know, of like, well, what could mine be? And I'm, you know, doing these light Google searches of like different land trusts and what's around and what's manageable and, you know, ending up in a place where I frequently visit anyway, being the Beer Line Trail, but like giving it a new perspective. And um, this kind of segues into um, one of my aunt's question in the chat. <laughs> um, but thinking of like, you know, the anticipation of like what could be in making a plan for, you know, my current residency and, and just taking a new view of it. And like the other day we collected leaves, you know, along our walk and came home to make some leaf art with that, with the kids. And then I'm thinking, well, then how can I incorporate this moment, this season um, and time into my, uh, a piece? And then, but what about winter? Like what is, what can I maybe anticipate doing um, knowing that it's all fluid and things will change, but, um, just that sense of longing is also a, a, a jolt of excitement as well um, and thinking ahead. Mm, thank you. And yeah, I'm excited to share Marlene's question uh, to the group. So she asks, what colors, sounds, environmental or visual influences do you anticipate as an artist to encounter with this upcoming fall winter season? Mary's unmuted. Yeah, well, I um, already in, in this fall season, I, I have, you know, really dived right into a color palette of, of fall, you know, with the browns and yellows and, and 
um, and so softened those uh, rather than the than the bright vibrant colors of, of the season. And I tend to, without intending, my my artwork follows the seasons automatically. You know, and I, I'm sure that in as winter comes, I'm probably my palette's probably going to go into the cooler tones, into you know, to the whites and violets and light blues, and it it just it just happens naturally, you know, whether I'm getting out in nature or not, it's, um, I, it just, it flows through me. Mm. Todd, it's been interesting to see a shift in your work over the years, more towards black and white. I wonder if you could speak to that in connection to this question. Hmm. Yeah, well, I think the black and white is mainly because of the drawing and dry media that I was using for a while. Um, hmm. Working with the white, I was working with a, um, a white, uh, it's called white ground for etching. So the thicker the ground you put on the plate, the more or less acid gets to the plate, which creates different values. Um, and uh, it was interesting to start working with paint again and with white which is not really a color but the the steel plate is a color so kind of like incorporating from a black and white starting to even see i i love heidi how you have the very muted colors of your palette and most of that is it a color isn't it a color and what defines color and those subtleties and uh the, the nuance is something that I guess is very interesting to me in this work that I'm doing now and in terms of possibly bringing back more color. Um, I do also do some a la poupée and, and working with some colored inks in the etching process. So um, to answer the question a little bit, yes, I do anticipate a little bit more, just like Mary said, um, incorporating colors that are naturally happening in the environment. Um, being in the present moment for me is is the most important thing so to anticipate really is something that i don't do often but mm. as long as i'm in the moment and then the work and the colors kind of come through as mary said oh thank you mm. um mariah you have so many generous resources on your website to guide people in walking or connect them with nature. I wonder if you could share a little bit about, about that, about how someone might interact with it, uh, just to, to create a richer experience for people who are curious. Yeah, sure. Thank you for noticing that. Um, yeah, I, I um, through other residencies that I have been a part of, I um, in in Michigan, I started developing scores for walking in audio formats, um, and they're also transcribed. Um, uh, and nothing is needed um, to take these walks except place to play sound. Headphones can sit and listen to them and imagine moving through space, or you can take yourself on a walk. Um, I call these little hellos to the body and to place. Um, and one of the first things that happens, I think, uh, or where these came from is, is, is as COVID rose and noticing shifts in um, societal bodies, um, being ungrounded in place and ungrounded in our own um, body does something to the weight. It does something to our nervous system. Um, and so to, to um, step outside and feel the earth beneath our feet and look right and left and sort of open up our peripheral vision as opposed to being on the screen um, sends really important signals <laughs> to ourselves um, that we might be okay and that we are connected um, to each other if we choose to look right and left and what's below us. So they were definitely COVID responses to um, an, uh, the reaction of nervous systems throughout the city as uh, certainly Milwaukee went through, you know, social and um, 
political reimaginings um, and and sort of new spatial relationships. Um, but I use these as a teaching tool. I make my students make their own and also take walks through space, especially my international students who are new to the Midwest and to a small Midwest town. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, I would love to close with each of us sharing a little bit about how people can connect with us or see our art or engage with us a little bit more deeply. So I can begin and then we can go in the same order that we presented in just for ease of sharing. I am, uh, I, I have a lot of work here on YouTube. So there's different hand yoga movements for connecting with your body, relaxing and caring for your hands, especially if you are a maker or a creative person. I also have a conversation series called Soft Bulk, where we talk about and celebrate the three-dimensional qualities of quilts. And that's with my friends, Zach Foster and Luke Haynes. And we always have a guest on who we speak with. So we recently had art collector Roderick Kirikov uh, with us. Um, I have work all month at Gallery 224, as well as this week, Sunday, two days from now, I will be leading a walk at Lake Park for free. So you can join me. The details for that are on my blog, on my website, HeidiParks.com. And lastly, one of the things that I love to do most is to teach classes on quilting. I really deeply enjoy teaching and introducing to quilting people to quilting and maybe allowing people to think of quilting with a little bit of a bigger definition than they might have arrived at it with. And I teach classes in person and on Zoom. So I have a Zoom class coming up in December as well as some wonderful classes coming up in Santa Fe and Arizona and on Madeline Island in Northern Wisconsin. And those can also all be found on my website on the workshops tab. Um, so how can people connect? Mariah's next, right? And then Lodge and then Sarah and then Mary and then Todd. <laughs> sure. Uh, check out my website, mapsformaking.com. Uh, most of my work is um, through teaching situations right now. I'm on, um, that's my focus at the moment and performance and touring will come back at a later date. Stay tuned. Thank you. Um, so I have a website, redcranefilms.com and uh, Instagram, I'm building my Instagram, making it stronger and trying to be better at posting. I have a screening coming up of one of the, my films called On Hands, where I documented the work of 20 uh, makers and artists who work with their hands to focus on what we gain by working with our hands. That's gonna be at Marne. Um, they have a new uh, studio downtown and Broadway in January. It'll all be there in my Instagram page and on my website. So. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank yeah. you. Right now, I am also um, in an, primarily in an educator role here at Myad as well. Um, and I do share a lot on Instagram. So the handle is Sarah Icorn on Instagram. And I will probably be posting um, upcoming like walks or workshops or things of that nature as they relate to the art servancy on my website, which is sarahicorn.com. And I am just really looking forward to this, this upcoming year and what I can create. And thank you all uh, past residents for sharing. Thank you. Okay, so I'm Mary Mendla, and I uh, can be found on my website, MaryMendlaFineArt.com, and Instagram and Facebook um, at, at Mary Mendla. And I, I guess when I remember to, I, I guess I'm putting things on, on Pinterest under Mary Mendla also. I also have um, an online artist network uh, called uh, CreativeJourneys.us. It's a membership network. And um, it's a, commu a community of artists where we share a great deal of, 
of information between the two of us, at, uh, between all of us and, and um, uh, incorporating everything about art and, and expanding our creativity with, within a community of artists. And I teach a lot of workshops. I've developed a few online classes that, um, that are in oil and cold wax painting and uh, a few different techniques in oil and cold wax. And then also I happen, I'm a fiber artist, which I hadn't talked about in this. Um, so I have some, some uh, workshops in shibori fabric dyeing and other, other fabric dyeing techniques. Um, oh, and I also have a, a YouTube channel, uh, Mary Mendla. Thank you. And uh, you can find my work at my website, toddmrozinski.com. Uh, Instagram is just my name, Todd Mrozinski, uh, or Facebook. Um, I'm going to be having some etchings uh, for sale at the St. Kate Holiday Marketplace. That's coming up December 11th and 12th. And I'll be in a uh, ex uh, exhibit at Marn for the Marn Mentee Mentor Show. Uh, that's opening in two weeks. Mm, thank you. Thank you. And then for anyone who is in the Wisconsin area interested in the Art Servancy Residency, the residency begins in October. That means that we start advertising about the applications in August and find out at the end of September if you're a resident. So keep your eye on that. There are 12 residents each year. So, uh, you know, throw your hat in the ring and you might be able to do it. And otherwise you'll still get inspired with all the longing while you are waiting to find out <laughs> if you've been accepted. Um, thank you again to everyone. And I'm on my way this afternoon to my artist reception at the gallery from five till seven. So very excited to be there in person. All right, thank you everyone, goodbye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank bye -bye. you. So exciting to meet everybody, Megan, bye.